Hey everyone, my name is Asti Elias, co-host of Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. Today we have my co-host Anthony Toma, and we have Chris George, chairman and co-founder of Subta here today. So yeah, we'd love to just hear about, you know, I know Chris, but I don't know so much about Subta and your background. So I would just love to learn about like your history and how you got into the subscription based business. Sure, glad to be here. So thanks for inviting me. That was my second time on, so yeah. excited to sort of give a uh, catch up since it's been a couple of years. Sure. But long story short, the cliff notes on Subta. Subta is the, is the subscription trade association, and we've built the largest community of direct to consumer subscription brands. 2014, I was originally the co founder and CEO of the Gentleman's Box. Uh, I saw a lot of brands pivoting to this sort of subscription model that was acquired in 2020, so after since the last time we talked. Yeah. But in 2016, I identified that nobody was cultivating this community. So me and my co-founders sort of on a whim like started this event called Sub Summit. It felt like I was in high school throwing a party and I had no idea if anybody was going to show up. <laughs> and um, it was about 200 people. It was a huge success. You know, fast forward three years later, we're in New Orleans. Anthony, I know you were there. Yep. It's over a thousand attendees, right? Everybody from Netflix to FabFitFun, HelloFresh, BarkBox, you name it. Wow. Uh, and it worked, right? So we built the trade association to cultivate this community and educate brands on how to build really successful subscription businesses. Wow. Wait, okay, let's backtrack even yeah. more. Like, mm -hmm. what were you doing before? So, to, well, so I, yeah, I was doing the gentleman's box. So that's that's sort of what yeah. started me in this space. And I was in the e-commerce field. Gotcha. Even before that, I was in a different industry. Yeah. But I always wanted to be in e-commerce. Gotcha. you. Right? As growing up, my parents had, a, my dad had a party store, right? Yeah. Like a lot of us. And... I remember, you know, his idea was like the whole business model is get something for cheap, sell it for like more, right? Yeah. And you were limited to this like two miles around the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so very early on, I think I might have been 19 or 20 or even 18, I was like, look, I'd rather buy something and sell it to where my market's like the whole nation. So Smart. I was selling things online. That's what sort of led to me getting into the e-commerce space and then ultimately building Gentleman's Box and Subto. I love that because I just feel like we're such merchants, like yeah. Chaldeans are such merchants. Yeah, so definitely. I love that you are now multiplying it yeah. with the subscription. Okay, so your background was e-commerce, you did Gentleman's Box, and then you created, basically you wanted to create like a community and like an event, yep. um, which was genius because it's such a like huge industry right yep. now. So tell us more about, or just tell our community about yeah. like the subscription-based business. Yeah, look, it you're starting to see that in every aspect of your life, there's some sort of subscription associated with it. Mm -hmm. You can have your furniture in your home be on a subscription. Mm -hmm. You can have the software that you use, it's already on a subscription. You can have food delivered on a subscription. You have the clothes that you want delivered on a subscription. Mm -hmm. We're at the forefront of that. So, you know, that was really beneficial to us to be that leading voice within the space. And having a lot of knowledge in the background, we help businesses build much better subscription brands. And then having one that we had acquired helped because I learned a ton within that space. Yeah. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, if you are a business, mm -hmm. you should have some sort of subscription model. Right. And there's a lot of benefits to that. And I think that, you know, for our community, a lot of us have like a lot of these retail shops or we're building this sort of business. They need to be thinking about how can I build a subscription model within their industry or yeah. within their business. And I think it becomes very important. There's like tons of benefits that we can go into. But um, it's very important that you understand that that's where this model's pivoting to. I'm sorry, where the consumer's pivoting mm -hmm. to. So really good example. Five years ago, if you wanted to use Microsoft Office, you had it for your business, you'd probably use it when, when you were in school. You paid 500 bucks for the program or you lied and said you were a student and got it for 150. Yeah. Now you pay a monthly fee of 15 bucks and you use it as you want and you don't use it as you don't want to use it. Consumers are about convenience and they want to use things when they want to and cancel them when they want to cancel them. Mm -hmm. The next generation of consumers, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, would you have let, um, your kids are still young, but let's suppose yeah. your daughter's 16 years old. Would you let her get into a car with a stranger to drive somewhere? Oh, absolutely not. Right? But now they get into Uber. <laughs> That's yeah. true. And they're going yeah. to do that. They're right? calling the Uber right? themselves. Yeah, the, the, they're calling this person <laughs> that they have no idea who it is yep. and saying, come pick me up here and drive me here. Yeah. Right? Um, you want food right now, like right now if we were hungry, we pull our phone out, go on DoorDash and the food gets delivered. It's yeah. a convenience thing, right? When, you know, 20 years ago I wanted to go on a date with a girl, I'd have to like meet her at the bar, like mm -hmm. call her phone, wait for her to call me back. 
and like eventually we might have a date. Mm-hmm. Now you just swipe right and you're going to dinner with somebody. Yeah. Right? Like th- th- this whole Everything's world. Everything's automated. Of with Chaldeans, <laughs> yeah. you used to have to let the phone ring once and hang up, and then they would call, call you back. back right away. Yeah. yeah, or hit them on the beat. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Right. Or get cussed out by the parents. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> It's that's a big part of why subscription models work is because it's helping with convenience. Yeah. And and then on the flip side, like the benefit to the business is critical. Mm-hmm. So they've got this reoccurring income. It's predictable. They know how much money is going to come in every single month. Yeah. Um, they're building a relationship with the consumer. So. You know, we all think of businesses that we want to start, whether it's a T-shirt business whether it's selling candles, whether it's starting a new coffee brand, right? The truth is Amazon and Walmart are the big elephants in the room. And no matter what, they are going to sell it to the consumer for cheaper and they're going to ship it to you faster. Yeah. You're never going to compete with them. But with a subscription, you can build an experience that you cannot get on a retail level that's going to allow you to compete with them, right? So, you know, you talk about the brand like Sauna Detroit. Amazon can't sell that shirt because they don't have the design, Mm -hmm. right? You look at a brand like Chewy.com who has a bunch of products on a subscribe and save sort of model. Uh, They sell pet food though. Like what makes them different than Amazon? They're just selling pet food. They did sell for 3.5 billion. So we would say- Right, but so what what was the differentiator? How did they they come up through the ranks and beat out Amazon? Amazon? Yeah, great, good question. So, Chewy.com invested millions of dollars into their customer service team mm-hmm. so that they were fully educated in every single product that wow. they sell. Mm-hmm. So right now, if I called Amazon and say, I have a 65 pound husky that has mm-hmm. stomach problems, what food should I feed them? Yeah. The Amazon rep's probably gonna be like, call, call your know. vet. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, like look at the reviews, right? <laughs> yeah. The Chewy.com rep's gonna answer the question. In 2019, I talked to the CMO at Chewy.com. They hand wrote over, over 1 million holiday cards and sent through the customers. Wow. Mm-hmm. In 2020, they picked like a random, like, I don't know, a couple thousand to 3,000 customers that had been customers for a long time, and they had hand-painted drawings of wow. their pet that they sent to them for free. This is an experience you're not getting on a retail level. This is what ultimately led them selling for $3.5 billion to Petco. And on top of it, it's a subscribe and save. If you have a, pet, a dog and you don't want to go to the store, pick up a 65-pound bag, throw it in your car, drive it home, run it in the house. Yeah. On the third of the month, Chewy.com will deliver your dog food right to your doorstep, right? And now I'm subscribed to Farmer's Dog, so I get this all-natural, healthy food. Yeah. But that shows up at my door every two weeks in a mm-hmm. cooler. I take those out of the box, put them in the fridge. I never have to worry about food for my pet. Mm-hmm. So now that, like, convenience is out, right? Yeah. But all of those things is what allowed Chewy.com to be successful. Right. And so you talked about launching a business. What about existing businesses? People... Mm-hmm that watch this are already in a space. Yep. How do they how do they adopt the the so subscription well. model to their to their existing business? Yeah, and look, the, every industry might have some sort of different model associated with it, but the truth mm-hmm. is like if I was looking at it from like a 1000 foot view, it's like what are the current customers coming in and why are they coming in? And is there something that I can offer them that they'll, they'll make them want to come back more and more? A really good example is like there's a lot of um, uh, those in our community, they're in the salon space, right? They're nail techs, they're yeah. mm-hmm. stylists, they own salons. If I was a nail tech, I would say that instead of coming in and paying me, I don't know, what do you mean, pay $30 or $40 a year? I business? wish. Okay, so I wish. Maybe it's maybe like $80 maybe. now. Okay, so $80 for that. <laughs> I would say, and you go how often? Every two weeks? I every week? try to do two to three weeks. Okay. I would say, you're paying $80. I would say, okay, ASC, yes, pay me $150 a month. Mm-hmm. You get to come in twice and you get 10% off all the products. Yeah. Now what that does is, you will not go any other, to any other nail tech now. Yeah. Right, like, so especially with nails, right? Like, I see all the time with, with women that I know, like, they're like, oh my God, I get my nails done, I'm just gonna run to this place right here because I'm like in the area. Well, yeah. if you're paying that 150, you're going to your you're nails. going to the place that you're going to go to, and then there's this added benefit. Now this nail tech gets to look at their P&L and say, I've got, a, I've got a, a hundred people that are paying me 150 a month, that's fifteen thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. yeah. in guaranteed income, or is that fifteen hundred? No, fifteen. Fifteen thousand. Yeah, fifteen thousand. Mm-hmm. Jeez, I just yeah. gave somebody an idea that needs to like pull this off right now. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. that's not a little bit of that's not like a little bit little mo- right. amount of money, yeah. right? And so, it can apply in so many spaces. And you've seen other brands, other things started doing like tanning salons and gym memberships. They have these things, but yeah. you know, I have a gym membership. 
at Troy Powerhouse, I don't, so I always go there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to another gym because I pay for this one. So, you know, oil changes could be the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. There's a guy I know that sends you your AC uh, filters. Filters, yeah. Every quarter. Yeah. Yep. And he's got 30,000 customers paying him. Yeah. Wow. Think of how smart that is. Like, I forget to change that thing like, yeah. all the time. But if it shows up, it you're shows reminded. up. It's a reminder, yeah. and it's one less thing I have to worry about getting from my household. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I, the, the way to think about it is like, why are they coming in? How can I make it so that there's an experience and makes sense? How can I provide them some extra value to get them to continue to come back and then not thinking about shopping at somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's all about retention, right? Nope. Like, how can we keep the customer, keep them coming every month? So I love that idea. Um, so I wanted to ask you, like, I know you speak at a lot of colleges about yep. entrepreneurship. What's a good entrepreneur question we could ask him? What What do you think it takes to be a successful entrepreneur in the subscription space? Yeah. So I think this question probably applies to like any sort of entrepreneur. And I think that there's like, well, on the subscription space, it's like about the customer experience. Okay, right? so it's mostly customer experience. Right. And one thing that we as Chaldeans have, we have actually, like, inherently, we actually have really good customer service. We're so mm -hmm. hospitable. Yeah, we're so hospitable. I like, when you think it. about, like, those that run some of these uh, party stores, run these businesses, like, the customer service is sort of immaculate. Like, I feel yeah. like I was, like, born <laughs> or, with or, it. Or the opposite. Or the, yeah, potentially the opposite. <laughs> yeah, right? Right. But in, in general, yeah. because, like, you know, it's just, like, my mom, right? My friends would yeah. come over, my mom would, like, feed them, like, <laughs> like, like nonstop, like, make yeah, sure yeah. you eat this, right? Like, we're born with that naturally. So I think that's, that's a big sure. deal. It is. So customer experience is critical, providing value. And then How like- How do you make a customer experience through the subscription company? So by providing more value than just the product offer. Okay. So it's, it's like the bells and whistles. Yeah, it's the handwritten note. It's yeah. the checking in with them. It's like getting to know the consumer, right? Mm -hmm. Calling them and getting feedback. Like how can we improve our product? So one big mistake, a lot of companies make is they, the, the the founder, the entrepreneur, the leadership th team mm -hmm. thinks they know the answer. They think this is how it should be because mm -hmm. I came up with it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is your customers will tell you. True. And you have to listen to your customers and pivot and make a, an adjustment. I'll give you a perfect example. So when we had Gentleman's Box, we were $29 a month. It was a monthly, it got delivered monthly, tie, dress socks, tie clips, everything. We realized that consumers were canceling for one of three reasons. Either they didn't like the product, they had too much stuff, so product fatigue, like we were talking about your friend, yeah. or three, it cost too much. Mm. So at, at that point, we listened to the customer, we said, okay, like these are their, this is why they're canceling. We said, well, why don't we introduce a quarterly subscription? So instead of one every month, you get one every quarter, but we're gonna charge you $99, so it's oh. a premium. Okay. We made that pivot because we listened to the customers and we went from being a business that was essentially burning cash, meaning like I might have had like, I don't know, 12 to 18 months left in the in the bucket before we were gonna run out and have to go raise to being super profitable okay. and letting us being acquired. Because when we introduced the quarterly model, we eliminated two of the reasons why people were canceling. They were no longer canceling because they had too much stuff. Yeah. And they also weren't canceling because they couldn't afford it. Yeah. And when we think about it, well, we're like, well, that doesn't make sense. 30 a month versus 99 every three months. Yeah. But we were getting a higher quality consumer, a consumer that was willing to pay $100 on first purchase Yeah, is somebody that's more discretionary inco income than somebody that's willing to pay 29 on Very first true. purchase. I love that part, right? listening to your consumer it's, and it's, adjusting. I think that's yeah. huge. And like, I bet you like, a, like in the Chaldean community, that's like the worst trait we have. <laughs> right? Like, because we all think we know. Like, in like, ego, high ego. Yeah. Like, yeah. and, 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 and yeah. you know, I think that's sometimes hard for us to hear in the community. Like, I'll be the guy to say it. Like, I was like that too. Right? Yeah. Like, we think we know it. But the truth is, like, we have to always be learning. Listening to your customers is going to truly benefit the business. And that makes sense, right? They're yeah. the ones paying us. Yeah. The market doesn't lie. Yeah, the market doesn't lie and data doesn't lie. So there's that. Um, you got on the surface, like, there's little things. It's, like, why do you do it, right? So I get a question all the time. People call me, like, Chris, I need to make more money. <laughs> what can I do? I need money. I need, to, start I need to make more money. Like, <laughs> I get that call yeah. probably like really? once a week. You're the money man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, you know, it's like the wrong question, right? So the question should be, Chris, I like doing this. How can I make money doing it? So from 21 till I was about 33, all I cared about was making money. Mm 
Mm -hmm. like, and I wanted to like do all the fun things, like show off that I'm in Vegas, like the things that, that are okay to do, but like I was doing it for the wrong reasons, right? Like I wanted to make a bunch of money and every metric for success was revenue driven. Coming to the office, how many subscribers did we get today? At the end of the month, did we hit our numbers? No, we didn't, I'm like, shit hit the fan, whatever. Yeah. When I started Sub Summit and Subta, I didn't think, I wasn't trying to make money. I said, oh, well, if I build this community, now I've got all these experts like in my back pocket. Yeah. Like I can call them and be like, hey, how do you do this? Mm -hmm. And slowly realized that that made money and I slowly realized, well, I can scale this. But the truth was, truth is, and to this day, none of our metrics for success are revenue driven. It's how many businesses can we have a positive effect on? Smart. How many different pieces of content can we provide? How many different businesses can we help build relationships with, like connecting other other brands? And because we've never had, I've never, because for the last four years, I haven't focused on driving revenue, mm -hmm. I've built the biggest business I've ever built. That's amazing. Um, when I, you know, when we started, you know, we sold Gentleman's Box for like seven figures and I was offered eight figures in 2019 for Subta and I'm not, you know, like it's going to be the biggest business we ever built and, and it will never get off this idea of that we're building this towards like our goal of building an amazing community versus like, oh, I'm trying to make $10 million this year. Yeah, your purpose. Yeah, 100%, you know, like I know what my purpose is. Like I've, I've, I've established that I find joy in helping others build really good companies yeah. and it excites me, right? And, you know, the, you know, I think it was, um, oh my God, I forgot who said it, uh, but he said the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I think like I feel like I've established this why, right? It's like I'm here to help others build amazing companies. And like, you know, there was a guy that wrote an article and it posted online. And he said, a five minute conversation with Chris George netted me 150 grand in 45 days. Hmm. Like what? Damn. That feeling of reading that yeah, yeah, was like worth like, I don't even know what could have been a better feeling. Right? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah. like I felt so good. And you start to realize like in life when you help others, mm -hmm. It actually is like the most selfish act you can yeah. have, right? Because yeah. you feel good. Oh, for sure. Versus like somebody would have looked at that and be like, why don't I make myself 100? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Right? But like, truth is, it's his business model. Made a, it made an adjustment. Yeah. You know, when you see a, like, a, like a, a, somebody on the side of the road, like whether it's a homeless person or somebody that's in need, you know, people don't realize that half the reason you give them the money is because it makes you feel good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not because you feel bad. Right. You know, why do you think they're parked outside the casino? They won't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to have good luck. I give this guy five bucks. I'm going to have good luck in the casino. You but, you know, the, you know, but th that's a big, and I, I know I just kind of ranted for a minute. Yeah, yeah, but, Ranting's um, fine. Yeah. You, you, uh, we don't want to glaze over the, the message that you, I guess, give to the students in the, yep. sp uh, the colleges that you yep. speak at. Yeah. I mean, the truth is it's like, identify what you love doing. Yeah. Right, so you're gonna spend half your life working. Mm -hmm. This community, again, I'll be the guy to say Our it. <laughs> this community is like, how much money can we make? Yeah. yeah. Right, and I hate that trait. Yeah. Right, so <clears throat> we buy things to impress people mm -hmm. that we like probably don't even like. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, we do things to make ourselves look like we're a certain person. When the truth is, like, one, just be yourself, but the other part of it is, is like, it's okay to buy nice things. We all have nice yeah. things. If you want it, buy it for yourself, right? It's okay. Yeah. But figure out what you love doing, and then you'll find happiness. And if you, again, you're going to spend half your life working, so we may as well do something you like doing. Yeah. And, like, listen, if you love money, like, that's okay. Like, you can love it, but don't jeopardize your soul True. by trying to make it. Um, and, like, figure out how you can do more good, because I think it'll pay, like, much more bigger dividends than just trying to make money, right? You can't die with it. Yeah. Nobody remembers you for what you had. They remember you for what you gave. And like, for me, like, I want to be in some book 50 years from now that some kid reads in a school, <laughs> right? Like, hey, That's he did cool. this, That's cool. right? Like when I die, I want 10,000 people at my funeral because they said like, hey, Chris had some sort of positive effect on my life. Yeah. So my metric for success is going to be like, Maybe I'll be able to see from above. Like, I'll know based on how many people okay. are. Just don't die during the next pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 next, yes. No, Which brings up a good that. point. Pandemic, whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, that's how I'll know. I'll yeah. know based on how many people are at my funeral. Hopefully yeah. I'll be able to tell. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So true.
No, I love that what you're saying. I think that, you know, being Chaldean, we're raised about like, how do we become successful? How do we provide the most? How do we have the most? But what I'm so interested in what you're saying is just more like, how can I provide value? Mm -hmm. How can I find purpose? Enjoy what I'm doing. Yep. Sometimes our, we do miss the mark of like enjoying what yep. we're doing because mm -hmm. also what you're saying, it's not just monetary value, right? Mm -hmm. There's like value in other things besides, you know. Yeah. The reason why this is so important for those that might be watching this that are under the age of let's say 30 potentially likely don't have a family quite yet right mm -hmm. but like especially under 25 yeah like when you're 35 and you have three kids and you're married it's much harder to like try to build something you love doing because you're like stuck in this job that mm -hmm. you go to every day mm -hmm. but you're under 25 the last thing you need to worry about is making money yeah, yeah. figure out what you like doing yeah and the money will come and how did you figure out you liked subscription this? business? Gosh, for with Gentleman's Box, it was all, it was revenue driven. Like, oh, this is a model that works. Yeah. Yeah. The first sub summit, when we had 200 people in this room and we had this like little after party and everybody was drinking and the camaraderie and like the relationships that were happening. Yeah. Like I like, I was like on cloud nine, <laughs> like, right? On a high. You know what? I'm glad you just asked that question. I really realized it this two weeks ago. My conference was just two weeks ago. Yep. The conference finishes. We just had about 1,100 people there. Amazing. And I must have got like 20 emails and texts like, Chris, oh my God, that was so amazing. I hope you get some rest. Like, because we just worked this like 80 hour, 90 hour a week. I swear to God, I was working on the Sunday I got back. Wow. <laughs> because I was so jacked from yeah. the conference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to rest. That's how I know. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to rest. You know you love it when yeah. you don't think it's work. And like, you're just like me. You might get an email at 10 o'clock at night and you're gonna probably answer. Or there's yeah. like something, like, I don't feel like that's a burden. Yeah. I feel like right, that's right. what I want to do, right? So when something feels like a burden, that's when it becomes a problem. Work. I remember all those days where you wake up and you're like, fuck, I don't want to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Sorry if I'm not supposed to swear, but yeah, yeah. you can beep okay. it out. But um, you should 99% of the time be excited about Monday yeah. morning. And how did you know that there was you know, this new space that, cause you kind of created this. Yep. I'm surprised there wasn't already like yeah. a subscription event. So you found so like a loophole basically. I mean, I looked for one and it didn't yeah. happen. And then we were like shot in the dark. Like, Hey, let's, oh, like, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. And it worked, right? Like, um, yeah, it That's worked. Amazing. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Did you, how'd you feel about going to in event space? I particularly don't love throwing an event. How did you feel? Oh, I love it. You love I'm the opposite events. too. I love events. Yeah. I love putting I don't them love on. the logistics love, of them. I love it all. I love every bit of, yeah. every, every right. bit of it. So you started with 200 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now your network is a totally different network mm -hmm. than it was back then. Talk a little bit about that and what, what just doing Yep. a service to the community or the communities or yep. to the space, yep. how that turned into the network that you now have. Yeah. So that's a great question, by the way. Um, you know, they say you're the average of the six people that you're around, right? Okay. And so what? people say that like, <laughs> that the six people you're closest to, Yeah. yeah. right? If yeah. you're around millionaires, yeah. like you're probably gonna figure out a way to become one. For sure. Right? Yeah. Um, so, Multiple things happen with the change in my network. For one, there probably isn't a brand, definitely in subscriptions, that I don't have some sort of contact at. Meaning, if I want to call somebody in the New York Times, easy. Amazing. I've talked to the CEO of the Ear Ups for Tom's Shoes. That network of, 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 you know, I had the CEO of Truebill at my last conference. He sold his company for $1.3 billion. I have a cell phone number. Yeah. I can call this guy. So cool. My point with that is that well, let me. Yeah. What the fuck is he doing now? <laughs> oh, he's still he's still there. He's still there working. Okay. But that's just great, it's a great question because I you wonder what do you do after that. Yeah. But um um. Sorry, he's still there. No, no, no. You're right. It's like you know, but he's gonna build another tech company because right. he loves it, right? He's like yeah. one of the entrepreneurs. Um. But well, what a game changer for you through creating this event. Yeah. Now like, your whole network. Netflix is, was at my conference. The NBA wow. was at my conference. These guys are all in my network, right? So if I have a question about something, call them. But you become the people you're around, right? And I'm only saying this for the sake of revenue dollars because it's an easy way to explain it. But my network went from around being like closest people to me to now I'm surrounded by these millionaires that are making great businesses mm -hmm. to now I'm like literally surrounded by like billionaires that are making amazing yeah. businesses. Like there's like four in my network now 
that like filed for IPOs. Yeah. Like, like let's say I build a business in the next five years where I want to file for an IPO. Well, I've got these people I can call. Yeah. Right. You know, I want to get into the tech space. When I'm done with sub ten, sub seven, I'm 100% going into tech. Nice. Because one, that's where you build the biggest businesses. I'm hoping to get into green tech, which is going to help with sustainability and, and help the world out. But um, that's another thing that makes subscription businesses so powerful. You don't see any sort of food chain, retail place, for the sake of the conversation, mortgage company, right? Besides, like the big dog, that are selling for billions, yeah. mm-hmm. right? In the in the tax subscription, in the SaaS, mm-hmm. you're seeing it happen left and right because it's predictable income, it's high revenue, there's tons of data. But yeah, my network's just grown tremendously, and your network is almost your network. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, who you know is is just as important as. Um, what you have for sure were you nervous when you threw your first oh you said you were nervous yeah is anyone gosh. Gonna show up? Yeah, so how'd you good. sell the 200 tickets oh man hustled yeah i mean we landed we landed katya as a speaker that was a big deal so she was a ceo of birchbox nice and then we just hustled it out we were like letting people come for free i mean there was a moment yeah. of panic yeah we're like i didn't have anybody coming and i was like texting my friends like hey you're gonna pretend you're this company you're gonna pretend <laughs> yeah. like i had sponsors <laughs> But what's really, truly special about that business is I built it with zero dollars into an eight-figure business. I put a deposit down for the venue for three grand, and I sold the sponsorship for 3500 before the credit card was due. And I've never put a dollar mm-hmm. into that business. Amazing. Um, but but you've dumped millions back in. <laughs> yeah, millions back in. Plus, 2020 was very hard. Yeah. But... Um, Let's talk about that a little yeah. bit. Let's talk yeah. about when shit hits the fan and, yep, and adversity and things that are that are that are out of your control that that kind of sidetracked you for a minute, but you kept focused. And- yeah, yeah, and I think it's so important because one thing, all humans, we're afraid to fail, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But like, I'd rather fail and try than not try. Yeah. Because when you fail, you learn something. But 2020 was super hard. We were like on this like hockey curve of mm-hmm. like, like. We got offered like a stupid number in 2019 to be bought. I was like, no. And then like COVID hits <laughs> and we have no event. And, and like, I, like, I'm oh, like, yeah. and, and like. You missed truth, two events, right? We, no, we had one at the end of 21, but I'll talk about that. We lost 2020 altogether. Mm-hmm. And like, not like, I'm telling you, millions of dollars I lost. That really? Year. Yeah, yeah. From okay. Subta or from? From not having the event. The event is wow. our largest provider. You couldn't, people couldn't get together in person, right? Yeah. So we go from like this point where we, I say, oh, we don't want to lay off anybody because, like, we've got these employees. Like, they've got to live. That's not I, I noticed that about you. Like, the, your expenses didn't change. Nope. Did not have changed at all. Now, some of the loans, the government loan, that, that helped a lot. Yeah. But, like, I went months without taking salary. Mm-hmm. We made huge, like, we had huge revenue from the event that, one, supported the business, but also, like, put money in our pockets. It didn't happen. Mm-hmm. We go into 2021 where, like, it's a recovery year. So it's like a half conference, only like 600 people. Yeah. That didn't make us any money. This is the first time we're, like, finally catching up. But the point with all that, like, we didn't just break down and shut down. There were tons of event businesses that went out of business. Yeah. And there was a, there's, this, there's this thing that everybody always says. They say, you got to weather the storm. Yeah. I hate that term. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The term is you got to learn to dance in the rain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we pivoted, we did some online, we did an on, we did a virtual conference. It drove some revenue. It wasn't life changing, it wasn't paying the bills, but it was like keeping us like above water, yeah. right? But I'll tell you the 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 energy and everything that you put into that thing and the the production value that that came out, the production quality that came out of that thing was un- amazing. Oh, for the virtual. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. No, it was. It was good. And and that allowed us to have some sort of success with that. Right. But it's just not like the, you know, it's probably a quarter of the revenue of like a typical conference, right? So we, we, we pivoted. We danced in the rain. We focused on membership for the trade association. We focused on other ways to drive content. We made adjustments instead of just like crumbling. Mm-hmm. And like you have to go through that adversity. And like... Here's the truth of it. Like, it's going to happen right now for a lot of people. It is. Yeah. We're hitting a recession July 1st. Like, you, you're going to see in the next year, you're going to see probably more people that are not financially stable. And, like, yeah. like, and especially in our community, they're, they're coming off a big high right now. Like, a lot like of people win a lot of money. We're facing a lot. I think lot. two of the biggest cash machines were marijuana mm-hmm. and, and, mortgages. and mortgages. And both are... Yeah. In the shitter the, right now. So I'm glad you brought that up because what's going to keep the ones alive are the ones that build a brand, not a business. True. Mm-hmm. Right? 
And Some understand that. Will, oh, for sure. Cool, but yeah. a lot, a lot yeah. did not. A lot, because they're just a money grab. A lot made all. the money True. and spent the money. Yep. You know, they had to they had to get their Ferraris, their Lambos, yes. yes. their Rolexes. It was their, a money grab. Yeah. 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 I feel like our generation is, and I told this to my dad, is going to face, it's just so much unknown that we're yep. going to, like, there's no business that's 100% right. solid, you know, and like, there's nothing that's But you can protect against it, right? So like yeah. building yeah. a brand protects against it. True. Nothing happens to Apple when the economy drops, right? Because yeah. Apple built a brand. When's the last time you saw a Apple computer that had a sticker over the Apple logo? You never see that. But you look at a PC. Yeah. And they're slapping stickers yeah. over the HP logo. Yeah. Like, nobody, you know, it's like, <laughs> God forbid a young kid in school sends a text and it's green to a girl. I know. Apple built this habit that it better be high message. Or like, yeah. they, like, they built a brand, though. They weren't, they were saying, how do we enhance this experience with the consumer? You know, you, you see the Apple brand, you know it. Mm -hmm. PCs and Microsoft, no one like, no one cares to show off that they got a Microsoft phone or a computer. Mm -hmm. They built a brand. So in our community, any business, yeah. you need to focus on building a brand, focus on the customer experience, focus on something that's going to be like long lived, not be a money grab because there's a rude awakening. Those two industries are crashing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like the market's dead. The crypto market's dead. Like I, I, I'm not even afraid to say this. In the last, I am at the lowest financial position of my life in like the last five years. This is the lowest amount of financial money that I have. Yeah, yeah. and like it doesn't scare me for a second. Yeah. Right, right, because it's, ride the wave. it's never been easier to make money. Mm -hmm. And two, really like, isn't. You have to like, if you're an entrepreneur, you got to kind of. Did I jokingly say sometimes I kind of wonder like I kind of want to like hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. like, yeah. almost like crash and see like what happens am i going to come back like i, yeah. I it's like i've been there more yeah, than you, once. You, you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyone like, successful has it's, uh, like, it's not just always like an upward yeah 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 it just it's like almost like it's we it's like it's almost kind of like scary to think that like yeah. i kind of like want to see it happen mm -hmm. like i want to see like what am i going to do if this happens but you sometimes know. you don't, don't you don't need to hit rock bottom no like you should have a dip yeah 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 it's good to be scared that's when like your real hustle can come out yeah when your back's against the wall yeah and like things truly like you've been there like you said right like with like, the family. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And <laughs> that came out. Like, that's like a huge, that's, that's the impressive story. Mm -hmm. It's also humbling. Is the guy that builds an amazing yeah. business, shit hits the fan, yeah. starts back over, mm -hmm. builds it again. Like, that guy's a hero. True. Right? Like, like you know, th those are the stories that I love. And right. I think we all have to go through it. And you need to, like, not be afraid to let it happen, not care that anybody's going to think that it happened. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I tried. Yeah. You know, like, you're going to fault me for, like, trying. And, like, truth is, whether you succeed or fail, like, somebody's going to criticize you. And But they and shouldn't just, hold any water, shouldn't hold any no, weight, you just, really. You <laughs> say thank you and move on, right? Like, yep. uh, when I started Gentleman's Box, they told me, like, it was a stupid idea. <laughs> then when I sold it, they said, it's all you sold it for? Yeah. Like, oh. right, right. <laughs> when are you going to be happy? Pick up your mind. <laughs> yeah, like, when are you going to be happy, right? So, yeah. so um, yeah, you don't listen to that. And, and my biggest message to, to our community is build a brand. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Yeah. Do everything for you and your family. Figure out why you're doing it. And um, enjoy life, man. And be loyal. Yeah. Uh, like you said, you know, your net your network was this and now it's this. Yep. But I still see you with the same your same core group of boys. Like oh, your, yeah, yeah, your yeah, yeah, boys yeah, yeah. are my, your boys. Those are yeah, those guys are my ride or die. Yeah. Like, they're not going yeah. anywhere. Like yeah. they're 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 with me. And you know, there's two ends to it. Like, there's this like this business network versus like your friend, but like you do see me with those core group. Yeah. And I think you notice it's like I think as you get older that group gets smaller because you yeah, like they're married and yeah, kids yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But also too, like, you know, there's that one saying, I think Tom Hardy said it, like somebody that like the more friends you have, the more likely you're not as true to most of them. Right. Right. Wow. You know, and it, it's not to say that it's not okay to have a lot of acquaintances, but like your true ride or die is a person that you call and need. Like usually that circle's smaller and I think yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, but loyalty is critical. Yeah. Us as Cal, like as Chaldeans, that's another Pretty trait cool. that's like, you can't like find that anywhere. Right. Yeah. Like I have friends that like, I joke around like somebody looks at me wrong. They're like, "Gonna go say something." You know, like, 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 like I love those guys. You know, you know they're amazing. But um, that's that's a quality we have. And like, yeah, you gotta to, calm those ones. Yeah, down, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we but, fight wherever, wherever we go. But um, that's th those are the traits of the Chaldean like community that, like, that we 
grew up with that we need to like double down on the yeah. loyalty, the customer yeah. experience, the like wanting to do better for others. Like it, those are qualities that I love about this community and we got to double down on them with the world now. For I sure. Agree. And so before we, before we started rolling, you two were talking about you being in, in looking to build houses in another yep. country. Let's t- let's touch on that a little bit and maybe inspire somebody to do the yeah. same that's in a position to do that now. We were just talking about like how at the end of the day, it's just about giving back. I actually wanted to ask you, you did like Chris G certified. Yep. Yep, so yep. tell us about like that experience. I'd love to yeah. hear. No, so that was good. It was it was a, it was a few different things, right? One, it was like this idea that I had, I wanted to give back at scale, mm-hmm. right? And so, I had this epiphany while I was driving. I don't know. It was kind of one of those like moments. I was like, I got to do something. And so I had this idea of building this brand that gave back, right? And I ran the unit economics, and for every hoodie sold, I could donate 100 meals. The unfortunate part is people are inherently more selfish mm-hmm. than giving. So mm-hmm. the brand, people would rather buy something cool yeah. than buy something that was maybe kind of cool and gave back. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding because I built. I don't know, 30 different brands that have all had huge successes. The first one I did that was like a give back. That's also when I talked to the Tom Shoes CEO. Yeah. And I said, hey, do people buy Tom Shoes because you give away a pair? Do they buy it because they like the shoes? Wow. He said it was the number one argument in the office. Oh my gosh. Okay? Number but one argument? Was, was whether it, was it, yeah. were they buying the shoes because they were giving ah, back? I gotcha, I gotcha. Were they buying them because they liked them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you know what he told me? On average, people had four pairs before they even knew it gave back a pair. Yeah. Oof. Right? People are it didn't mean it didn't help with right. sales because those people became like promoters of the brand. But the truth is, and this is like a narrative that I'm trying to change, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Is that, you know, we need to give back and those brands that are doing that more are great, right? And so giving back also doesn't have to come from like a business product. It's like just inherently like going out and like building a home or making sandwiches yeah. for people or like, you know, for the holidays, I like to go, um, I go to, the, you know, I love dogs. So I like to go to the pet store. I buy like $500, $800 in dog clothes. I run to a rescue and I like give that's them dollars. Right. Like, right? Mm. like I, I, I would love to, you know, that's what I find some passion in. But yeah. this idea of like going to another country and getting in like even this crew of Chaldeans. Yeah. To, like I know Chaldeans will do this. Yeah. Because I had so many that supported the certified brand that like we're just doing it purely because like I had this brand. Like, you, yeah. Well, 10 of them. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Probably even wear half of them. But, but the truth is like you did it to support, right? Yeah. You like the idea of giving of back. So we're supported when we, it's presented in front of us. We as brands, we can do that more. They don't, you the community probably doesn't realize for a little bit of money, you can have huge impact. Yeah. Like, I think it's like a dollar can plant a tree. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that adds more CO2 emissions to the earth. Yeah. And then also like you can pay a certain amount of money to get like garbage out of the ocean, like little things. Yeah. If you had a business where you added 30 cents to the product, the mm-hmm. sandwich, mm-hmm. and you said- 30 what? Cents? cents. I'm just making okay, this up. Okay, yeah. And you yeah. said, for every 50 sandwiches we sell, we pull out, 50 pieces of plastic out of the ocean yeah. mm-hmm. it's pretty cool mm-hmm. and the 30 cents isn't going to make or break anybody right and then at the end of the year you get to say that um at and chris's sub place and we'll start that yeah one day, all right pulled out <laughs> about me well, uh, asked, you're right. you have a sandwich and, you're okay. yeah, yeah. and then um you know pulled out fifty thousand pieces of plastic out, like it's a big number yeah, yeah. it's impactful yeah people will remember right and then granted, they're gonna come because they like the sandwich, sure. not because we gave back. Right. But it's gonna feel good, mm-hmm. right? And there's gonna be some people that will talk about that. Sandwiches are awesome, by the way. They like pull this plastic out of the. Yeah, like you yeah. can figure out a way to like to sort of use that to an advantage. But yeah, that's it. Really. So what did you end up? How many meals did you end up? Oh, I don't know. Before I stopped doing it, I think it was like seventeen thousand or eighteen thousand. Yeah, it was good. I, I felt good that. about it. Yeah, I felt really I good think- about it. And. Look, that was an instance where I, had, I needed to know where I needed to fold the hand, right? Like, I'm putting all this energy in it, not quite working, right? And then I ended up teaming up with Sana on some stuff, which, like, is working. But, like, that was a perfect example, right? Like, yeah. he's got this brand flying. His designs are amazing. The kid's mm-hmm. like, this kid's good. A whiz, yeah. And you got another brand that was giving back. But yeah. really like the one that, listen, that's yeah. just the human behavior. I get it, right? Yeah. So... There'll be a way, and, and and San and I are actually working on some things to give back. We're working on that this year. And he's, he's actually going to incorporate some meals, or something we're going to do during the like yeah. World Hunger Month. But we're going to figure it out. Seventeen thousand meals is nothing to sneeze at, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, that's yeah. Incredible. I that. that is incredible. I yeah. loved, it really is. So, like I told you, I worked in nonprofit for four years, and we weren't selling anything. We were just. I was um, 
helping people leaving homelessness. Um, when they got their apartment, you'd be surprised. They don't have money to get furniture. Yeah. So, and imagine even when we furnish our homes, how difficult it is to move the furniture. You, leaving homelessness, you don't have a car. Yeah. Things like that. So anyway, um, I agree. I think our community needs to bring it up a notch on yeah. like giving back. And, you know, I'm sure even through SUBTA or you have so many connections now yep. too that you could make. Yeah, we do. We always do something, right? And yeah. like, we're, like one of the things was planting trees because like the subscription space is a lot of like wasted cardboard. Yeah. So smart. like we're trying to plant trees, but you know, there's this message that I've, I've actually never said publicly. Um, you're making me want to say it right now. And I've waited <laughs> for the right moment and I'll probably use it again at another time. Yeah. But the truth is, I believe this to be true. This is my truth, but I think it, I believe it to be true that one day people, we're all going to wake up and mm -hmm. you're going to realize that like life isn't as hard as we think it is. Mm -hmm. True. And the fact that we even have a car and a phone is a luxury to so many people in the world. And water. That's and a water. fucking luxury. Yes. <laughs> and some of the best memories and times of your life are when you're just around really good people. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't cost anything to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's Once what you, you kind of got to be one yeah. to be around them. You're 100% right. You just right. inspired but, me. Yeah. And so just, yeah, because we talked about it before and because I know you have like a heart for this space, I think keeping up with the Chaldeans, mm -hmm. we should go build homes in Mexico. Or you're going to come and you're going to come yeah, because our cool. community does not realize. I've literally seen people living in shacks with no yeah. running water. This is how the majority of the world lives. Yep. Not to get on a tangent or anything, no, but like, you're inspiring me because I could. can tell that's yeah. your passion you know, too. One yeah, of anyone that wants to donate, send me a check. Yeah, so <laughs> but like, truth I'll is, sure like, it gets to the right place. <laughs> these uh, these little tiny homes are a big thing now. Yeah. Like, you could build a little tiny home community for nothing. We built it for in nothing. Yeah. And you could sleep probably like like two to each one. Let's say you know supposedly one person. Yeah. But it's like you don't need to build a huge home. No. You need yeah. to build a, just a livable home. Yeah. Three four hundred square feet. People yeah. got a bathtub. Like, mm -hmm. that's a really good way. To, and 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 that's. That's why I'm hoping one day I hit this like point of like inflection with like a lot of money. So that because I'm going 100 percent giving yeah. a lot of that back to be able to do something like that because that'll make me feel so good. I love but that. it's crazy that we're three Chaldeans sitting here talking about trying to change the world when the mm -hmm. government just printed a know, seven man. trillion fucking dollars and yeah. it went yeah. to up in thin air. I know. That's why you just have to do what you <laughs> yeah, can. Yeah, we have to do what we can. Seven what? trillion yeah, fucking yeah. dollars. I know. It's a bummer. Like I that I worked in homelessness, so I see that like the government's not gonna be yeah. the most supportive, yeah. but like- We have to do we it. We have to just, as a community, yeah. just day by day, like you said, the memories you have, like for me building a home in Mexico that was 300 square feet, we did it in two days. I'll, like that's one yeah. of my most treasured memories. And even if, you know, it wasn't government funded or whatever, mm -hmm. like we can all do it as a community. Yeah, so, I can envision the picture of the yeah. whole, all the people yeah. that were there together ah, that built them. And that being up like in my house is like one of the most memorable moments oh, of yeah. my life. Right? Like, you. like you get chills, like thinking about so it. My right? dad tells me the story about how they rebuilt the church out in, uh, I think it's uh, El Kosh. They oh, nice. built, they, they raised funds to build a church in, in El Kosh on the, uh, it's obviously it's known because yeah. it's El Kosh, but yeah. So that's what it, one of his Fashion. fondest memories. Yeah, you know? it's amazing. I do want to do a trip there as well. Yeah. But since this interview is about you, I do want to ask oh. you two more questions. Sure. Let's see. I can tell you're like a visionary. So what do you see? Where do you see yourself in three years? Oh, three. I know it's a deep question, but I think you can handle it. Not a lot of time to for for change in three, yeah, years, three so. years. I was going to say one or five, but. Let's go with you know, ten. If I was giving you like a, I'm going to give you like truth. Like I have this, like, I have this vision of like, I want to be like known as the, like one of the most impactful entrepreneurs in the world. That's amazing. So where do I see myself in 10 years? Probably running some sort of green tech business that's having a huge impact on the world. Nice. Um, and that's my biggest like goal right okay. now. I'm unfortunately not on, quite on that path. My path right now is helping entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. but those entrepreneurs that I'm helping are in the tech space. So mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be my gateway to getting there, right? This huge, um, there's a huge tech firm that is worth like, I don't know, 2.5 billion or something. I think he was, he's already telling me like, hey, when you're ready to get in the tech space, just tell me, right? So like, 
that's where the network yeah, yeah, thing is going to sure. be real. So I see myself there in 10 years, um, hopefully the family and kids, you know, we'll see. What kind but, of product do you see for like green tech? You know, it's interesting. You know, we all smoke those vapes. I was wondering why they can't be recycled. It's got to be something there. Mm -hmm. Like there's a battery in there. I don't know why they're not being recycled. We could probably I solve think they're outlawing them or banning them yeah, or that, something. Um, so that's, 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 that like, solves the problem yeah, of recycling that's, those. That's, that's top of <laughs> mind. But, you know, um, I don't know quite yet, right? There's got to be some sustainability thing. There's got to be something in tech where it's helping the environment yeah. um, or giving back in some way. Like, what if those tiny homes all had solar panels on the roofs and it was generating energy then for the yeah. community, right? Like, there's probably, like, some way to pivot off of that. Um, and, like, maybe there's a way, like, God, I don't know how I'm just thinking about all this right now. Maybe there's a way to, like, um, like use those homes as, like, some sort of marketing tool for brands. There might be a way to do some of that stuff. Yeah. I'm a that. marketing mind, so, like, I'm probably going to, like, pivot more to the marketing side. I've been working on a way to try to, like, use text messaging to make out the, tr the checkout process better through Apple Pay. Wow. But, like... That's, cool. That's not green tech, but I hope to be see, there. Where do you see Subta in one to two years? Like, what's your goal for Subta? Two, uh, two years, probably two thousand people in my conference. By, nice. I'm I'm hopeful to bring it back to Detroit in 2024. Yes. where we started. Uh, that's what we're waiting for. Um, then then you'll get your two thousand people. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. for sure. Yeah, yeah, you'll for get sure. Ten thousand yeah. people. Yeah. Actually. No, not yeah. ten, but I'll get a, I'll get more for sure. Um, but yeah, that's the goal. Get that community up for the next few years. Cool. What yeah. has been your what has been your biggest challenge as an entrepreneur? I'd love to hear. The biggest challenge? What was a day where you were like, crap, like I just can't COVID. do this. I can't wake up. And that, COVID was for sure was the, the biggest challenge. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I'm, yeah. I wanted, my answer wanted to be that like, you got to embrace those challenges, right? Yeah, for sure. So like, I don't let them get to me. Like just as much as I don't let like the success get to my head, I also don't hear the noise of the failures. Nice. So like, I try to just like roll and I think the key is like hiring really good people and keep it. My team is so amazing. Like I am nothing without these mm -hmm. guys. Like our team is is so smart. The way they work so hard for the conference. I've never been so proud of these individuals. And like it's truly because of them that we're able to pull it off. Mm -hmm. And like I was joking today. I was talking to Liz and I was like, we we're doing this roles and responsibilities, and we like, mm -hmm. like. Not really get to me, but we, I joked about getting to me. Like, what do I do? I was like, you know, I'm just gonna make sure you guys are all happy. Like, she started laughing. Like, that's the truth, though. Yeah, yeah. Make sure they're happy. Leader. Inspire them. Give them the vision. And like these guys, they run with it. They're so good. Smart leader. When's the next uh, event? Yeah, next year. So, June May 31st to June 2nd in Dallas. Okay. Anybody that's thinking about subscription should be there. There was a few folks from our community that were there this year, yeah. which was great. Um, and if you want to go, like, honestly, if you're from this community, just email me. Like, I'll give you a free ticket. I just want you there. Like, mm. Just come out. That's so fun. What state is it in? It's in Dallas, Texas. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so as you know, since you've been here before, we close out every show by asking, what does it mean to you to be a Chaldean? Oh, yeah, we did ask you that question. Yes, I did. What does it Maybe mean to me? Maybe it's changed. Hmm. What does it mean to me to be a Chaldean? Oh, gosh. Don't hurt yourself, Chris. I know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a great question that, that I think that because I can't answer it right away, it makes it even better, right? right? Okay. Um, what does it mean to me? I feel like it's so embedded in all of us. Like. <laughs> I mean, there's like this idea of Keldean, like I just, I love this like sense of like loyalty, like these people that are around me. Mm -hmm. Like, so what is it? Gosh, for me, it's like this, idea of um that there's individuals in my life that i know would like literally like be there for me in yeah. any situation right for so sure. and me feeling the same way i don't know that all cultures have that it's hopeful that a lot of them do mm -hmm. but there's this weird sense of like i will call one of my friends and like without even mean asking they're almost like, oh no i'm gonna take care of that for you. yeah yeah it's like Sweet. whoa like, like yeah, yeah. that's like, like, what are you stressing about yeah, i got like, this yeah and it's like like I, that it's this like loyalty thing it's just like the ones that are close to you like chaldeans really embrace mm -hmm. and so for sure I, I think that that's what probably i don't know if that was a great answer i love that uh, yeah, it was actually a great answer because you struggled with it and and, yeah. and it was 
I caught you. We caught you off guard without even trying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you and you've heard it before. Yeah, I've heard it before. True. And but so it it's just it's so deep that it just changes and and it and it, it does. Uh, uh, I'm waiting for the answer to for someone to say that uh, to me what it means to me to be Chaldean is that I can predict the next roulette number that comes out <laughs> just because I'm Chaldean. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. know we yeah. can do we that. We know we can do oh that. It's so God. funny. Yeah. No, I feel like whether you love it or you hate it, like being Chaldean is just you, like embedded in us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I hope nobody ever says they hate it. I know. Yeah. Unfortunately. Right? Like, well, like, like it shouldn't what? be the case. They're kind Young, of younger, younger people sometimes do, but, yeah. but, and we've had people on the show that, that say, you know, growing up, I wasn't really into the Chaldean yeah. community and then, and then they realized what a community it is. Yeah, and, I mean, I wasn't you know, they kind of distanced yeah. themselves. They were a little nervous because you know, we used to start trouble. We were troublemakers. We would we would get a yeah. bad reputation on the streets. Look at and, it. Anybody that says they hate it, like you are it. Yeah, you are it. Right? So like you embrace it. it. I want yeah. Like if anybody's friends. listening says that, call me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we can talk about it. And then this isn't a situation of like, oh, you you should never say that. No, no, no. Like you have to embrace what you are, Correct. right? Like, Correct. there's nothing wrong with us being Chaldean. Unless it's, you're uh, right? on the very far left, and then you can uh, <laughs> oh, no. disown it. <laughs> just, just disown it. You can't say that. You can't say that. You cannot say that. Well, you're over freedom, there. You're on my right. I'm on the far left right here. But that's the truth. You got to embrace It's just like, you're yeah. like, there's there's people in life that get, that have like, things in life hand fed to them. Mm -hmm. They start super financially successful. There's other people that don't know nothing. It's the cards you're dealt. Yeah. True. Well, the one and thing that's not changing about your cards is that you're Chaldean. Yeah. So, like, embrace right. it. We're really exactly. blessed. I we want are. our community yeah. to know. We're so in a bubble we don't even realize until you leave. Like, oh, my God, we have so much yeah. support in this community. And, like, Chris George is a resource. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, what we said in our I'll last interview. Yeah. Use I Chris George. Your, yeah, happy to help. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, for don't forget me. to subscribe and like and all that. And thanks for course, thanks for being here, it. brother. And thanks, thanks for Chris. spitting some knowledge and some truth on uh, on our community. And hopefully the uh, 25 and under whatever range you're, we're yep. talking to, uh, pick up on what you said and, and run with it. Yeah, no, I love it. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. And like, what you guys are doing is great. I love that you're you. sort of getting this community out there. You're you're highlighting people that have done amazing things. For those watching, like support them by sharing this with more and more people. Right. Because this world needs to know, like there could be somebody in California that could do business with somebody that was on the show. Absolutely. That could dramatically change your life. So like the best thing that the listeners can do is share this with as many people as possible. Thank you. Cool. Thanks guys. Bye y'all.